My friends, I've got a lot to discuss with you, and it's all instrument related this morning, so I think you'll enjoy that. First of all, you know, you've seen this old 1884-ish Washburn guitar. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. The D18, I was able to do the full setup on that yesterday, and I'll show you and tell you about that because there was some interesting stuff. And I'll show you the next project in line, and we'll do all that right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is February 7th, and that is a Tuesday, which means we are going to be playing at Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rolla, Missouri this evening. Come out and join us if you can. Yeah, I want to talk about all these guitars. Keep in mind, this thing is, what, 140-ish years old, something like that. Let's just check the moisture content. I got one of these newfangled meters. Now I had a meter before, but it was a really complicated thing to use and you had to jump through hoops and etc. and so forth. So this one, you just push the button until it reads hardwood. Now I'll put that on the back and it says 1.5%, but now that's going through a finish. So it's really not very accurate. And the reason I say that is because Take an example here. I'll just touch it to my hand. Bingo, it goes overload instantly because there's a lot more humidity. The humidity won't get through this finish very well. So, and I can't, it's too, I'm not going to take the strings off to put it inside there. But that'll give you some idea though that it's, you know, it's 1.2% moisture content in the wood. This thing, as far as I can tell, has never been humidified in its life and it looks perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the instrument. And you might say, well, you fixed it. You know, it was coming apart. Well, sure I did, but it was coming apart because of hide glue. Hide glue alone will come apart due to too much moisture or too little or too much heat or too little. I mean, hide glue just comes apart, period. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to come apart in 140 years. There ain't no doubt about that. But I glued it back with tight bond. I don't think it'll come apart again. But my point is, looking at the finish on it, you can see the finish is basically perfect. You know, there's really nothing wrong with it. And it's 140 years old, and I am positive it's never been taken very good care of. I am positive it's never been humidified. And the reason I say that is because it came in that old wooden coffin case, and if anybody cared about it, they'd have done something with that because it was just flopping around in there loose in that wood, you know. So it's never been taken care of. You can just tell that just by the way it showed up here. But anyway, the point is, that's saying that, you know, it's a one... Um, let's see here, we got 1.2% uh, moisture content going through the finish. I suspect it would be 4 or 5% if you went inside. Okay, they dry it down to 6% at the uh, sawmill, so, you know, we're in the ballpark. Let's just look at this newer Martin D18. And again, I have to go through the finish. And I'm looking at the hardwood side, which is the back. And this one says 2.3%. 2.3%, you know, that's still in the ballpark, again, going through the finish. Let's just take a look at a piece of bare wood that's here in the shop. Now, this has been on the shelf for a couple of years. It's been laying out in the open. It's, uh, no, we gotta change it to softwood. Hang on a second. Okay, this is softwood, because this is spruce. So let's put it on here. See, it's 7%. Well, yeah, there it is, 7%. It changes when I show it to you guys. So it's 7%. And, you know, again, they dried down to a roughly 6%. So it's pretty much stayed the same. Uh, my point is you just don't have to do as much as people tell you you have to do in terms of moisture content of the wood. If you keep it in a just a normal place that you like to be, not in a hot attic, not in a real wet basement, but in an average house, and you don't set it next to the food stove, and you don't set it next to a, a, you know, a vent that's blowing constantly, you don't do any of those things. As long as you just keep it in a normal conditioned place, 
you should just be fine. You're, you know, again, 140 years old, guarantee you nothing's been taken care of on this thing, and it's just fine. I have said from the day one that too much humidity is far worse than too little because you can't get much less than they come out of the dryer with. You know what I'm saying? They, you can't only, it's already 94% dry, so it can't get much drier, but it can get a lot wetter, and the wetness swells the wood up and causes the finishes to crack and all that stuff. So do what you want. I'm just telling you the practical side of it, the, the uh, common sense side of it. And the only other thing I want to say about that is, and I have seen this many, many, times in my 40 years and that is do not whatsoever ever use those chemical humidifiers those ones that have chemical packs that stay moist in there with chemicals and stuff do not use those because they will eventually leak and you will hate it I promise you I have seen them leak and leach chemicals out where you can actually see them through the back and see them through the finish so you definitely do not want to use those packs. If you want to humidify still, do it a different way. Don't use chemicals. Okay, off that soapbox. Let's see what the next project is. Wow, ain't this special. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to have to call and see what they want done with this. I think they want the neck reset. The, the neck angle is really goofy on this. Uh, and I'm not hardly exaggerating. The neck angle's like this. <laughs> You know, it's really pretty bad. Um, this is a K-Craft. Those are K's. They look like R's. It's K-Craft. So it's a K-Craft Dobro, a resonator uh, guitar. Uh, it's got the round neck, so this was probably intended to be played as a slide guitar rather than as a Dobro. I think the people that I'm fixing this for want it to be a Dobro. We got our work cut out for us on this old puppy. I, I'm pretty sure this thing is really old. I, I don't remember what they told me now, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is from the 30s, if not older. But we'll get it all apart here and show you some daily progress on this. By the way, I thought I would show you the difference. I only showed you the backs on these guitars. So here's the top wood going through the finish again, and uh, I have it set for soft wood now. And so that's 2.6% uh, going through the finish. That's probably pretty close. Let's go through the top of this new guitar and see what it is. It's 3.6%, so it's 1% higher. And again, I think if you were to touch this, the bare wood, you'd be roughly 6%, 7%. You'd be in that ballpark. Might even be higher. You never know. Going through the finish makes a difference. It really does. Just like I said, when you put it on your bare skin, because it's the moisture can get right to the meter, it shows off the charts. And just like that, you have to be able to let this thing get to the bare wood, just like we did here. Well, I told you I would tell you something about this Martin guitar and what I ran into on it, on the setup. Now, the setup on this was already better than 95% of the instruments that come in this shop. I mean, it really was very good. It was only 80 and uh, 70 right in here. So, I mean, that's about as good as you can do, really, 80 and 70. The action was just a hair high up here. So what I did was I did a fret leveling, recrowning, and I polished all the frets just like a mirror. So they're very polished. And I lowered the saddle yet another 10 thousandths, which drops it another five here. And I lowered the action up here uh, quite a bit on these bottom three treble strings especially. Now the E string, the, e, the treble E string, was definitely very high. And as soon as I started filing, I thought, oh, it's got filler in there. No wonder. And so I cleaned the filler out. By the time I got the filler cleaned out, it was too low. So what I did was, rather than make a whole new nut and spend an hour and a half and charge a guy $150 for a new nut, when there's really very little wrong with this nut other than that one string's a little low, it wasn't crazy low, it was just low enough where it was just starting to buzz. So rather than that, I just feathered these uh, three frets down, just feathered them out, and took that down just enough so it clears. And you can hear it here, it does clear. <laughs> So it does clear, 
plays crazy easy. I had to file out a pretty good hump right in here. There was three frets right in here that were high, and uh, with the action as low as it was, you it was buzzing there, when, especially when you came up here. Now you can come up here and... It doesn't buzz at all. The action is crazy low. In fact, I don't remember the numbers, so let me let me read them for you real quick. Turn it down here and show you what I'm doing. And uh, at the 12th fret, geez, 72 thousandths is what I'm gonna call that. And on the uh, treble side, <laughs> my gosh, it's crazy low. 50 thousandths, something like that. So it's crazy low, it really is. I also filed some off this um, saddle on the top because I didn't really take much off the top. I just made sure the angles were right because I think it was doing a little bit of a, a weird sound on one of these strings. So anyway, all together, it's up in very, very good shape. When I first looked at it, I thought, man, there's nothing I can do for this thing. But as I got into it, as usual, I find all kinds of little bitty things that you can tweak. I also got rid of the sharpness up here. These, these, this was very sharp. And that bothers me, because I guess I get my hand in funky positions, and when you go past that, uh, you'll feel those sharp edges. Well, I got rid of all that, that and I uh, also rounded off all the corners of all these frets, because they were a little bit sharp. So I did a ton of work to this thing, even though, in one way, it didn't need anything, <laughs> if, you, if you go by just the sheer numbers, you know. But on the other hand, I think it's as good as it can be. And the guy was, his main complaint was it didn't play as easy as all of his other guitars. Well, it ought to play as easy as all the other guitars now. <laughs> I would think if it doesn't play as easy, I don't know how to help you. Because it's, it's the lowest instrument I think I've ever set up. And it doesn't buzz. So as long as it doesn't buzz, that's as good as it gets. One more little tidbit I want to share with you. I appreciate everybody that's bought tools from my recommended tool list off of my website. In other words, I have products I use uh, on my website and uh, people buy the different products there. Some of them are tools, some of them are just supplies. And I thought I would just share with you how much money I've made over the, I guess it's probably been what, six months now, something like that. And here's the actual check from Amazon. And you can see there, it's made out to me, and it's for, what is it, $128.70. So, in case anybody was suspicious that I'm getting rich on stuff like this, I'm not. My saying on things like this is, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> so $128, it's not gonna make me uh, wealthy, it's not gonna uh, improve my lifestyle, but I wanna say thank you anyway for purchasing the different supplies and tools off of my website. I do appreciate it very much. Every little bit helps support the channel, so thanks. Thank you for tuning in today. If you would, please give me a thumbs up for the video and uh, tell your friends, pass this around, uh, have them check it out, I would appreciate it. If you're not yet subscribed, please get that done. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.